Hey, welcome back to the channel. Steve AZ711 here. Well, this is the Whirlybird turbine vent made by Lomanco with a lifetime warranty on it. So here's what's in the box. Let's go ahead and unpack it. This thing's going to go on the roof today. Got your instructions. This is a roof pitch guide. The instructions show you how to use that. I already know my roof pitch. Some screws. This piece is called the elbow. And this piece here is called the base flashing, although I think I called it a few other names under my breath. What I'm doing here is uh, positioning this uh, collar between the two trusses about equal distance, and then I'll eyeball the center of the circle. This is where I want to drill a hole. And uh, it'll give me a rough estimate. Uh, just need to be in the ballpark here, just so long as it is between the two presses. That's the major thing. Okay, I found a piece of wire I can put up through the small hole I just drilled, and then when I go up on the roof, I will be able to see where the hole is a lot easier than trying to hunt all over for it. Well that wire sure made it nice and easy to find the hole. I made sure in addition to not only being between the two trusses but also being on a section of the panel that didn't involve an overlap to my left and, uh, and my right hand is on an overlap and to my left hand there is an overlap uh, on the panels so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to cut through an overlap and it would be more difficult to cut also and it uh, I just didn't think it would be uh, structurally as sound so I made sure that, that I was not only between the two trusses from underneath but then I looked on the top and I found where my panels overlapped as well so I made sure that this base plate was positioned between the two overlaps on the panel and here I'm tracing around the uh, base plate with a pencil this is a good thing to do because it'll give you an idea where the base plate is resting when it's underneath the panel and later on in the instructions they want a screw to be placed at each of the corners so you'll know where they are when you trace around it like this I found that the pencil didn't work as well so I got my uh, Sharpie and it worked a lot better for drawing the uh, inside cutout circle. That will be the part that will be cut out is what I'm tracing around now. Time to get rid of the wire, and it's gone. I decided to use a reciprocating saw with a metal blade, and the metal blade is wide, so I need to drill some holes so it will sit down and try to get, get the thing started. drill kept slipping off to the side, but I eventually 
get the holes drilled and I'm able to get the saw in there, or the saw blade in there. Now the reciprocating saw will make short work of this circle. It, it goes through stuff very fast. But what I found with these is very difficult to control the line. The blade is wide enough to where I can't really turn the circle. I'm thinking a more pointed metal blade would have made following the line much easier and I'm just not getting the cut I want. In fact, the cut just went outside the circle here, so I decided that, uh, the, well, I'd go ahead and try to go the other way. But I, it's very difficult to see the line and to make the cut as accurate as, as you would like. So I decided, no, I'm going to go with something else. So I grabbed my old DeWalt uh, jigsaw, it's corded. Uh, dragged the extension cord up on the roof. Uh, I kind of wish I had a battery powered jigsaw now. I started with a metal blade, but the blade was too short and ended up breaking on me, so I went back to my wood blade, which was longer. So I was able to go through the metal and the uh, OSB at the same time. The wood blade is fairly new, and the metal being 19 gauge really didn't slow it down too much and I was able to go ahead and go around my circle with much more accuracy. I brought up some more tools to cut the uh, metal with and here I'm measuring the line that I need to cut sideways about halfway uh, center of the circle. I got my measurements from the outline of the base flashing that I had made earlier and then just went half of it. Use my level as a straight edge. I went from side to side with a pencil. Okay, now I have a line to cut. I grabbed my Malco corrugated metal shears to cut this line. The uh, paneling is down pretty tight and to get regular metal cutting shears in there would have been very difficult. I do believe I did try that a little bit and uh, these Malco shears just hog their way through. You just keep working it. Do one side and then I'll go over and do the other side. Okay, now I'm fitting this uh, collar base plate uh, under the metal 
and above my uh, underlayment and what's happening is my underlayment is tacked to the uh, OSB with the uh, plastic washers and I'm encountering a plastic washer on the right hand side of this and it's just does not want to slide under. I have made numerous attempts at trying to get around it and over and under and it just just really is just not working very well at all. Finally, I decided to take out a few screws to allow this panel some more movement. And in the end, I believe that helped a whole bunch. Finally, I got it positioned in there and it was looking good. Real happy with it. Now that I've got it positioned where I want it, I need to make a couple more drawings because there's some more metal to cut. So I'm marking the bottom here, these ridges need to be cut out. Yeah, I'm cutting backwards. I probably should be on the other side, but uh, I didn't want to move around up there. I was happy with the spot I was at, and I figured these things are pretty good. I'll cut backwards, and they worked just fine. Now that I got my strips cut, I'm going to take the metal shears here and 
cut the pieces out. I want to have a little bit to bend over the ends of the the uh, strips here. As you can tell by now, the wind has, has come up a bit. I'm putting uh, caulking around uh, some of the openings here. Uh, I will come back and do a better job, but I just wanted to get something in there to hold it down a little bit and give me an idea what's what it's going to, how it's going to sit, I guess you'd say. I'm grabbing the elbow and going to position it on the base flange. There are holes in the elbow that are numbered according to your roof pitch and there's three holes in the base flashing that will line up on the roof pitch hole. So you position like mine is a 3 and 12 and I will take the number 3 hole and I'll position it and I will have a, a perfect alignment for a 3 and 12 uh, pitch roof. I'm installing the three screws now that will hold this elbow on. Now's the time to get the elbow level. Uh, you can level it by turning it. it. It is adjustable. And when you're happy with the, the outcome of your level, then uh, you're done and it's time to get the caulking tube again. In hindsight I probably should have waited on this part of the caulking on the inside because there is a little metal hold down piece that uh, you attach which uh, keeps this collar, excuse me, keeps this elbow from uh, rotating around. I will put that on in a minute and uh, get caulking all over my fingers. I'm sealing all the small little holes there that were uh, there for the uh, pitch alignment and any other holes. The last ones there I shouldn't have sealed right away because that's where I believe I attached the uh, metal piece that holds it elbow from turning. So I got off the roof and decided to go down below and put some caulking 
around the bottom edge here. Decided to uh, cover the OSB pretty well, just as an added preventative measure in case there ever was any water to seep in that would not uh, catch the edge of the OSB. Back on the roof it was time to do some more sealing around the base flashing and the elbow. I eventually get the whole thing sealed in really well. And while I was up there I went and put the uh, screws back in that uh, on the panels that I had taken out. I put screws here on all the corners of the base flashing according to the instructions and I just followed my pencil line that I drew earlier to know where the corners were. I have it all sealed in really well and I'm going back and sealing the inside of the uh, elbow some more and uh, we'll seal the metal clip that you can see just uh, right there to the right of the caulking gun. The turbine has three little legs and they fit into three indentations on the elbow and are tightened down with the screws. You just position the turbine with its leg into an indentation. And get a screw and get it started. I went around all three first uh, loosely to get them lined up. Here I'm putting caulking on the screws that hold the turbine on. I thought that maybe a little caulking on those would keep them from uh, loosening up over time. They, I doubt that they ever would, but this kind of ensured that they would not. As you can tell throughout the video, the wind has been coming up. It was supposed to be gusting to 25 today. So the turbine is spinning on its own. And I'm like, I decided to take my Sharpie and write the date on the top of the turbine, just for fun. It won't last in this desert sun for any length of time. Yep, had to give myself a thumbs up on this one. So this is Steve AZ711 saying thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I hope all your turbine installations go easier than this one anyway. Bye for now. Yeah.